Like the new logo? Thank Nice Rex for making it. Thanks, Mike. And catch his reviews on his YouTube channel. Well, guys, it took a while, but here it is. Welcome to the 100 subscribers special review, starring the man of the hour. What is it about Kiko Cubicle that players love? Is it its simple and quick puzzle premise? The fantasy of saving a princess and her kingdom from an evil wizard? Its colorful and playful nature? Or is it because this little guy is so effing cute? Oh, look at him flying around in his little red balloon. <laughs> Seriously, tell me, cause I'm not convinced. Oh, you heard me. What makes this such a great classic anyway? Dude, seriously? I mean, look at it! It's the perfect mix between puzzle solving and reaction gameplay. Hey, Blind Gamer! What are you doing in this review? Why, I am just dropping by to prevent anyone from making the grave mistake of passing up this game. This is one of my favorite NES titles and it deserves some love. Of course, the colorful and playful nature of the game really helped make it a fun experience too, but the gameplay is just great fun. It keeps things fresh throughout the whole game, constantly introducing new elements or using older ones in such a way that they require you to think differently than before. Most of the time you can't just stand around and think, since everything is out to put you on ice. Pause! See? Problem solved! No disagreement here. Kiko Cubicle offers up a good chunk of variety with a great mix of challenges. Sometimes you gotta form ice bridges, others building frozen walls to direct flow or shield from enemy fire. And every so often dodging enemies and timing your escapes right. There are dozens of stages, each succession bringing a new twist. The goal is always the same, but like Hapai said, this game isn't afraid to heat things up. But I gotta point this out, most of these puzzles are no brainers. I mean, one glance and bing bam boom, solve the puzzle, beat the bad guy, and you're done. They might as well throw out the clock, cause I ain't scared of it. Right, Hapline? Uh, Hapline? Oh shit! You say something? Kiko Cubicle? Too easy. It is? Well, in all fairness, yeah, I guess the main game is way too easy. On top of that, it's also very short, with only 4 levels, each consisting of around 17 stages and a boss fight. These bosses are unfortunately also laughably easy, with the exception of maybe the final one, which can be a bit of a pain. But those 4 levels are just a warm up to the main dish, which are the 30 bonus stages. Try beating the pure cruelty found within those without hitting the little pause button of yours. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. And that brings account to what? 97? More hammers, more springs, and more pirate chickens? But really, it's all still softball puzzles with softball answers. Except for the last two. Oh man, those were a pain in the ass. But if you want ball busting cruelty, then I got two words for you Solomon's Key. You tear your hair out by room three. Oh come on, games are meant to have fun with, and Kiko Cubicle offers that with its charming and weird presentation and easy nature, and even though you- Whoa, guys, guys, do I hear the sound of people hating on good games? Happy nerd, you too? Hell yeah dude, half Blind is totally right. Kiko Cubicle may have a few too many levels before it gets serious, but it more than makes up for this in presentation and style. What do I mean by style? I mean this game is fucking adorable! The whole thing is presented like a big silly children's book. The worlds you play through are places like Cakeland and Gardenland, where you rescue cakes and vegetables. Bonus items are tasty popsicle sticks. Our hero is formed by the power of love and floats in on a big red balloon. You don't input your passwords on the password screen, you write them in Kickle's diary. And check out this game over screen. Oh, I'm sorry little buddy, I won't let you down. And look, there's a giant whale. That's awesome. 
See, I told you this game was great. The HVGN even came on to tell you that. Then you know it's gold, man. Yeah, it is easy, but... Oh, just blame that on that one Japanese guy who always thinks we're no good at games here in the West. Yeah, that's right. The Japanese version of this game had some differences. The stages have more enemies, more action, and are thus more hectic and fun. To top it off, you can select the stage by floating around with your little balloon and land any way you want, giving the game a non-linear feel. Yeah, yeah, I hear you guys. But the real me here are the princesses. Myers got Peach, Link's got Zelda. What does this little snowflake get for saving Garden Land? Probably some pint-sized rot with a big fat tomato for a head. Wow. She's fucking ugly. Gotcha. Had you guys go in there for a second, didn't I? Did you really think I go out of my way to bash good games? I mean, the name of the show is Classics Unleashed. Not classics like kicking the balls and laugh at their further pain, huddled up in the corner, crying over a three-gallon tub of <gasps> Rocky Road. P.S. It's sugar-free. Here's what I really think. Kiko Kiko is a winter wonderland. Innocent and pure in presentation, simple and playful in design. Every snowy detail given great care, only to be matched by his big little adventure. Yes, it's a tad easy, but that's what makes the game a perfect entry into this greatly underappreciated genre. Not too hard if the challenge is too frustrating and overbearing, but not too soft that winning isn't trite or banal. It's just right. If you're tired of the kid gloves, like Hatboy said, pick up the Famicom version. And besides, how can you say no to this little guy? He's so cute! Interesting thought. The coming that brought us action pack titles like R-Type and Metal Storm also brought us Kickle Cubicle. But that's hardly surprising since Iron isn't alone. Before everybody loved Ninja Gaiden, Tecmo had Solomon's Key. Before the adventures of Kirby, Hal had the adventures of Lolo. Before the Wild West had giant robots and lawmen with kick-ass nukes, Nasumi had serious fun making art with my favorite bomb-kicking penguin. Yeah, like how Epic Games made Jazz Jack Rabbit before Unreal, Codemasters made the Dizzy Games before Micro Machines, and of course how Philips had... had... Uh, Video 2000 before CDI! Alright, forget that last one. And don't forget Insomniac made that first person shooter Disruptor before they made Spyro the Dragon. And id made Commander Keen before they made Doom. Yeah, and I bet you 10 to 1 odds gamers faving these have no clue about Kiko Cubicle, Maniac Mansion, Guardian Legend, Kickmaster, Yeez, or any of the dozens of types of games out there. Maybe that's why there are reviewers like us, to tell you the games you missed out then and are missing out now. Wait, what? I thought we did this for well fame and the ladies. Oh boy. Well, I guess there was the added objective to inspire people so that they may too broaden their horizon when it comes to the many lost gems that are scattered throughout video game world. Alright fellas, let's say we wrap this up. With a nice tall glass of Pepsi Cola, right? Not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, why not? A toast. I want to thank everyone for subscribing and watching my reviews for the last... How long since I started? Two years. Wow, time sure flies. But once again, thank you for your comments. It was fun making these videos, but it was more fun making new friends. Here's to the next 100. Cheers. 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 Psych! Coke drinker for life, punk! <laughs>